If you're looking to stake your port, I'll show you how to do that in under 10 minutes. Hi, I'm Chase Raz, and this is a TZO tutorial. Let's go. Before we begin, let me say that to stake port, you need to be using ZRC20 port. That's port that's on the Zilliqa blockchain. You can't use your Ethereum or ERC20 port. Again, you need to be on the Zilliqa blockchain. Second of all, I suggest you do this on a desktop. I've seen a couple of support threads out there that suggest the same thing. It's not that this isn't possible on mobile yet. It's just that the interface for the staking contract isn't optimized for mobile. So we're generally looking at less of a headache if you can use a desktop or a laptop if that option is available to you. So first up, in your browser, we're going to want to navigate to crypto.packageportal.com, which you can see right there on your screen. And so let's go ahead and navigate there. Now I'm zoomed in quite a ways, but there's nothing here it looks like. If we take a look at the, the upper right, if you will, just above me here in the video, we're automatically led to the claims page. We're gonna go to staking, but it doesn't matter. There's nothing there yet. We have to connect to Zilpay first. So first things first, if you are not using the Zilpay wallet, you're gonna wanna get that Zilpay wallet. And through the magic of editing, I now have it up as a browser tab and you can see Zilpay io this is the crypto wallet you're going to want to use if you're staking port my guess is though if you have zrc20 port again port on the zillica blockchain you probably already have zilpay that's my guess but if not this is what you need okay so back at crypto.packageportal.com we're going to click the connect button and we're going to be asked if we want to connect to our zilpay wallet let's go ahead and approve this by saying connect and here things do take just a little bit of time to load. This interface again, as I mentioned, is being optimized over time. And so here I am in my TZO wallet and we wanna take a look around, double check and make sure that you're on the staking page. Remember I had clicked over a little bit earlier. You may still be on the claims page, which looks like waiting for it, this, but we wanna be over on staking. So when you're wanting to stake your port, there are two options. The first of which is going to be what's here by default, the buoy. The buoy is a temporary short-term docking location for your boat, hence the name. We have this port theme, this nautical port theme going on, and the buoy is going to give you 7% APR. Now I'm looking over at my notes. I haven't done the APY conversion to know what that is in terms of APY if you're uh, compounding your stake, or I should say compounding your rewards rather. I should say that properly. So I don't know what the APY is right now off the top of my head, but this video is about how to stake. So I think that's probably fine right now. We can do those numbers and put them on social media later. The buoy has a seven day, let's find this right here. So 7% APR, and there's an unbonding period of seven days. So when you put your port in, everything's just gonna keep in their language, keep burring, just keep going. And when you want to eventually unstake, you'll have this seven day waiting period. But unlike a lot of your other crypto that you stake, you continue to earn this APR while you're unstaking, while you're unbonding. So 7% right here, seven day unbonding period. For those of you who want to hold your port for a longer period of time or earn more money, there's the option of the dock. So we have the buoy and the dock. Now the dock gives us a significantly higher APR. It's 19%. And the trade-off here is that the unbonding period is three months, effectively, it's 90 days. Now, this is intentional, intentionally long. This is designed to show confidence in port and in the long-term holding of port within your portfolio. So don't go thinking that this is some type of mistake or that it's bad tokenomics. This is very much intentional by design. Okay, so now that we know the two options, let me give you a demonstration. What I'm gonna do is take my TZO wallet here and I'm going to go to the buoy and I'm going to put, let's see, we've loaded up with 30 port. Let's say we've you know been able to do a lot of scans. Maybe we've been able to buy on Zillswap and we've accumulated 30 port. We wanna put this in the buoy right now. I'm gonna show you how. So first of all, we just select the buoy, enter the amount of port that you want to put in to staking the balance is shown directly 
below the input, you're even told how many zil you have. Make sure you do have some zil in order to conduct these transactions. That's going to be your gas payment for these. So if you're coming over from another blockchain, if you're coming over from Ethereum and had ETH port, right, ERC20 port, and you've now, you know, either crossed the Zill bridge or you've purchased port on Zillica, don't forget, right, we need gas here on this network as well. So you're going to want to make sure you have some Zill or some Zillings as the formal term is. You're going to want to make sure that you have them in your wallet. After this, it's simple. Just click stake. You're going to be asked to confirm the transaction. They cost up to 20 zil on the average transaction. It's never, it's not going to cost that much. We're not going to look at what it will cost, but it's not going to cost 20 zil. I'm going to do a little bit of editing magic, and I'll be right back. I'm glad I took a little break because I got hit by the DS block on Zillica. And what is that, you may ask? Well, that's the block that every 100th block on the Zillica blockchain takes five minutes. <laughs> I look, I don't know what they're doing about that over there at Zillica. And the reason for it, by the way, is because a new mining leader needs to be selected and all these things happen behind the scenes. So if you ever have that happen where a transaction on the Zillica blockchain at the present time is taking literally five minutes, that happens once every 100 blocks. Again, I don't know what they're doing to resolve that. It caught me right here. So just know it's a thing right now and nobody likes it. Okay, so I have my 30 port. The screen automatically refreshed. There is a refresh button if you need to try that once you're sure that the transaction has gone through. But what we see is that we have a, a stake that's already in place. Now, once you stake, I want you to pay special attention right down here to see that the automatic restake option has been turned on. It's on by default, meaning what you earn is going to be added and compounded within your amount. If you don't want this to happen, right? If you don't want this to happen, you need to deselect this checkbox and run another transaction. Again, it's not going to cost a full 20 zil, but you need to run another transaction and this will update your contract or your interaction with the staking contract to say, no, you want the rewards just to where you can claim them. And notice that once you untoggle this, once you turn this off by interacting with the contract again, you'll have these buttons down at the bottom, instant withdrawal, withdraw rewards, and that way you'll be able to pull your rewards out while keeping your principal staked. Now that will lock you to the actual APR, right? There's no need to do an APY calculation at that point because it'll be 7% per annum. But right now I'm not going to be doing this. I want to keep my uh, interest in there and compounding. So I'm going to reject this transaction and talk about one more thing very briefly before we end, which is what happens when you want to unstake. Well, it's pretty simple. What you would do is simply enter the amount that you want to unstake, whether it's the total amount, whether it's the partial amount. And yes, you can really do this right now as soon as you've staked. You can because what you can do is you can say, well, I only want to stake for seven days. See, as I mentioned before, once you stake, it just keeps going and going and going. You're staked. You're bonded. So when we talk about the seven day unbonding period or the 90 day unbonding period for the dock, it's not that that's how long the staking contract goes for. It's that's how long you need to wait while still earning your APR. That's how long you need to wait before you can claim that amount, that principal amount of port back to your wallet. So let's say I want to go ahead and unbond all of the port I just put in. We'll put that amount in 30 port, click on stake and confirm. Now, at this point, what's going to happen is another transaction is going to process and my port will begin unbonding. Seven days from now, I'm going to be able to then take that port into my wallet again and take possession of it. Super simple. In my main wallet, in my real wallet, right outside of TZO, I just leave it staked. I leave the rewards compounding and I let it just keep going and going and going. Some people may want to turn off automatic restaking so you can take some profits uh, in terms of your APR, or rather take your APR as a profit. Look, individual choices, whatever you want to do. Some other folks are going to do, want to do exactly what I did. Uh, here as an example, have a short-term seven-day stake, immediately unstake and let the, the unbonding period go, knowing that you're going to get that 7% APR or that 19% APR. But it, again, the choice is yours. Hopefully now you're empowered to stake your port and earn some rewards. 
I'm Chase Raz, and this has been a TZO tutorial. Take care, everybody.